that's a cool way that I could capacity test that battery. Let's try and use my BMS to completely test that battery and test my original claim of 25 kilowatt hours of storage. I reckon I'm gonna be close. Now the kicker is, I'm not doing it at a realistic load. It's probably a handful of amps it'll be testing at, if that. So it's gonna take a proper long time. So my BMS is a passive balancer supplied by Batrium and it is a 10 to 15S and it's called a Watchmon 5. It's discontinued. There's much better stuff that has replaced it, but this is what I've got. So this is what I'm gonna test. So the plan is actually take a look down here and I'll show you through it. So this is my Batrium software. This is a Watchmon toolkit. So this is actually my main house battery. Uh, roughly looking at it, we can see the lowest cell is 3.96 and we've got 4.03 as the highest cell. Uh, state of charge is approximately 69%. 150 amp hours to go until the battery is full. Uh, the average temperature is 28 degrees. Uh, the shunt voltage is 56.6 volts. And we're putting in nine, what, 93, 92, 93 amps into the batteries at the moment and 5,200 watts. So a couple of hours, she'll be fully charged again. But if we click from that one, so we've got, I've got that one, which is a Watchmon 4. And then I've got a Watchmon 7, the blue one on the wall there. There we, shed, I call it the shed battery. Yep, there we go. So that's a 7S and that's a Watchmon 7. And that's balancing away. Uh, that doesn't get very much use anymore. And then the last one is we've got the Watchmon 5. So it, we call it homeless because it was sitting around my shed for a long, long time. Close that up. And now these are all wireless back into the battery unit inside of that shed. So we've charged the 14.16 volts as a minimum and 14.17 volts as a maximum. Um, it's staying state of charge is 100%. And the capacity full is, well, it's full. Average temperature inside the case is uh, 29 degrees and it's discharging only slightly and that'll just be 0.02 of an amp and that's running the BMS. But what I wanna do is just go to telemetry and then I can go daily history so this is sort of what I'm gonna try and do. I've got the daily history here. And once it loads up, it'll actually show me how much it's bypassed each day. So we've got a cumula cumulative of 2.19 amp hours yesterday. That's how much it charged. And it discharged 0 0.6. So this is the figure that I'm gonna look at each day. So I can just scroll back through. So hopefully we can go here. So this is lifetime metrics. So I'll leave it on that page just for a second, make sure it all loads up. I think we can hit status RX and that actually pulls all the information from the battery management system. There we go, I think that's fully populated. Uh, now this doesn't tell me, I don't believe anywhere that I've seen in here actually does the cumulative amp hours from the battery. I think from memory they said that it does happen on the cloud application. Um, and if I get the cloud application going, I might actually ask that question. Well, the six weeks that this is, you know, emptying the battery. So if we go from menu, go to hardware. Now the majority of the batteries that I've used in this build have a cutoff voltage of two and a half volts. So this will go from whatever voltage is now all the way down to two and a half volts. Now it's not gonna be a very accurate real world test, but it will give me some numbers that I could, I could potentially go back on and in five years time if the thing's still alive and run the same test again. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go 2.5 volts is the lowest cell voltage. So, and I'm gonna cut it off at that voltage because at 2.5 volts, you don't wanna go any lower. It doesn't matter about the whole battery voltage so much. It says that when, when that one cell gets too low, the battery is technically useless at that point. Unless you had an active balancer, and I think it's, that's a whole nother conversation we're not gonna have here. Okay, so we're gonna go to the cell monitor, and at the moment we've got uh, a low cell voltage is 2.7 volts. So we wanna modify that to 2.5 volts. I wanna stress, this is not something I recommend other people do because it could cause problems. I'm just gonna have a, have a go and, you know, maybe I'll learn something. 
So the plan is low cell voltage, 2.5 volts. And now if I hit uh, save, that's the voltage that is the safety point. So it'll cut out and at that point, the test will be over. Now to actually start this test, the next thing I wanna do is do the bypass voltage. And currently it's sitting at 4.2 volts because that's where I wanted it to charge to. And I didn't worry about balancing it up until that point. Um, we're gonna take that down to 2.5 volts. We don't want 25 volts, cancel. Actually, before we do that, we're gonna come down to bypass extra mode and we're gonna turn that off. So we're gonna go auto level to none, save. And now this will be the start of the test. So if I go to bypass volts, 4.2 volts, and then change it to 2.5 volts. So basically what that's gonna do is take all of those cells and it's gonna try and balance it down to 2.5 volts. Now this is gonna put an extraordinary strain on that battery management system. And it is not, and I, it is not designed for this. Um, if something bad comes of it, I hope, uh, one, we can learn something. And if I document all the data and I've got the computer plugged in, I'm gonna have a whole heap of extra data that I can supply to them. Um, and then they can go, well, what killed it? And it's probably the six weeks of balancing, to be honest, but look, we gotta try these things, right? So 2.5 volts, as soon as I enter, that's done. So officially we're starting the test. So if we go back to chart. Ah, it didn't work. Did I not hit save? Cell monitor, ah, <laughs> you gotta hit save. So two, maybe I did it the wrong way around, 2.5, enter, right here, 2.5 volts. Now this is the start, right here, save. Now we should be able to go chart, done. So it's actually saying it's doing half an amp and I would have assumed it would, would have done more than that. So it's doing 21 watts, but it is jumping around a bit. So. We'll let it run. We'll come back tomorrow at this time. So midday tomorrow, which is midday Monday. This is my work day. Um, we'll pull it up. We'll, we'll pull up the same, you know, same page again. We can have a look at what the data we've got, and then we can continue the test. I think this will be a good test. What do you reckon? At this point, leave a comment below. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe already. Start the time lapse. Right, welcome back. We're about a week later, right? Uh, so it turns out, maybe, maybe this is a dumb idea. But look, I'm gonna release the video anyway because we gotta learn this stuff, right? And well, I did. Uh, so what's actually happened? Well, the battery's come down a little bit. But unfortunately, as you can see there from the Batrium software, the Watchmon Toolkit, we've got a minimum cell of 3.98 volts and a maximum cell voltage of 4.12 volts. So something has gone wrong. Um, now, this is not a fault with the Watchmon, the Batrium, the software, or the BMS. It is not designed for doing this, so perfectly understandable. I learned something new. I had hoped it would have worked, but it didn't. After such an appalling failure of this video, I still have to capacity test the battery. So I've pulled out the old battery hasher. We're gonna get that going again. And we're gonna capacity test it about three or 400 watts with the battery hasher. And if you don't know what battery hasher is, I'll leave a couple of links below, but basically it is a DC to DC uh, mining rig that has worked on and off for videos only. And that's basically hooked straight into the DC, up into that little DC to DC, and then the cables all done and a little pico board that runs the 12 volt 5 volt and 3 volt and then that runs around 
to there as well. So next video guys, I'm actually gonna have a capacity test. So thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.